Yo, yo, what up guys? Mike here, Entrepreneur Army, back at it again. Here we go with another video. Hey guys, in this video we're gonna talk about, um, well, I guess we're just gonna be washing stuff. We're gonna be washing roofs. Uh, we did a house wash today. Um, another one the other day, but mainly roof cleaning. But we got some house washing. But we got uh, Gia on the ground right there. Gia, say hi. Let me flip this over. Gia. Say hi. Now we got Brooklyn. And then that big guy's Roman. Oh, hey, Roman, give me Paul, bud. Give me Paul. Good boy. He's got big, big paws. So he's going to be a monster. He's only uh, five, four and a half, five months. So. Yeah, so listen, when you start a pressure washing business, you got to do research, okay? People who make videos like myself and others, you can learn a lot from us in the sense of just getting out there and doing it. You do not want paralysis by analysis, and that's when you overthink stuff too much to the point where you feel like you can't do it. Your best bet is to get out there and do it. You can only do so much research. Research is good, but if you get too far and you get paralysis by analysis, it's not good. Also... You're not going to make a killing right off the rip unless you have a big budget and you can pay all kinds of money for an awesome website and SEO and Google ads. You are not going to kill it your first year. I did not. I probably made 12 to 15 K my first year and I was doing it part time. People message me and they're like, hey, you know, I'm not doing like you've been doing it for two seconds. Chill out. You know what I mean? You can't. Hey, 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 knock it off. Sit down. Sit down. But yeah, if you don't, if you don't give this effort, you're not going to succeed. So those who want handouts, you aren't going to make it. And your first year or two, it's not going to be very wholesome and rich. So you just got to stick with it. Now, you know, my, within my third year of business, I was making over 100K. And now we're doubling that. So we're, you know, hopefully one day we break a million, but we'll see. One million a year would be pretty ideal, but I'm not there yet and it takes a while. So hang in there. So I get these, these are, I don't know, five or 10 pound bags. Russ Johnson has it. I'm sure other people have it, but Russ is who I get it from. Uh, this is oxalic acid and it's, gosh, it comes out to less than $2 a pound. And one pound will make you a gallon of really good mix. So, and that's a strong mix. So you could even get a half a gallon per gallon or a half a pound per gallon but anyway so pretty cost effective stuff and then this right here is called component c but really it's just uh, sodium hydroxide and it's called component c because he he sells degreaser uh hot degreasers like bd200 where it's bottle sodium hydroxide and some other stuff but it's a hot degreaser and basically you get a box with this uh, component A, component B, and then this. And this is the hydroxide. So what I do is I keep it in, you know, I, I'm, I'm in my skid. So I don't have, you know, all the room in the world. I just filled up my hydroxide beads. Open it up for you. But you can tell the difference. These are more like loose beads, so... 
and I'm sorry people were complaining about my camera lens being dirty it's not the camera lens it's the case that my phone's in and I'm a klutz so yeah I'm leaving the case on but so we're good on component C we're gonna put uh, shit. we're gonna put some ox in that both of these and these are two pound these are two pound uh, containers so you know I keep about four pounds of oxalic on the truck and with a pound you can get a lot done with the pound so we're gonna go ahead and fill these suckers up just cuz today I needed some I ended up having to use uh ended up having to use some uh F9 and uh that that stuff's expensive so let's see how messy this gets Okay, so that got a little messy, but both of these are full now with oxalic. And these these containers were labeled, um, but like I said, I know the difference between the powders. It's actually very easily um, oxalic's more it's more finer powder, but it clumps. So I can tell the difference when there's big when it's big and clumpy. But it's more of a powdery, clumpy mixture. And the, uh, you can hear it if I shake. The hydroxide beads are more like beads. So they're a little looser, but they're a bead. Very important you know the difference is all I'm trying to say. Oxalic and hydroxide cannot mix. Cannot mix. When you're doing a stucco house, what we do is we keep the mix somewhat hot. We do like 3%. So we pre-rinse pre -rinse all the windows and then I soap all the windows and any dark, dark areas. And then right after I'm done, say this side, there's six, seven, eight, nine windows on this side. He pre-rinsed them. I hit all nine windows and then he immediately starts rinsing the windows really really well and then all the dark spots you wait till later and rinse them just so it soaks up really well but it tends to work you just got to have the water on hand ready to uh, dilute everything that's hitting grass or plants or anything just bag up electrical sockets uh, cameras lights anything like that
Hello. Do an episode video. Noise. Shut down. Yeah. This part. All right, here we go. Keeping everything wet. We got a uh, flower pot down here that we're uh, covering up. I don't know if we got that on the camera, but it's right on the drip edge. There's no gutters on this side. Keeping my feet on the bottom of the tile. One foot at a time, no uh, see see the top of the tile there a little damage document that But that's from someone stepping in here when you need to step here, so We'll get up to the top here Little damage That's from a surface cleaner So we'll get up here We'll do a little spinorama Get down in there. Okay, so now we're good to start cleaning. I'll probably, it's a little boring, but I'm probably gonna do a little more close up of some of these cracked tiles. Yeah, so join along. 